Hi. <gasps> How's it going? It's morning for me, so I'm having coffee right now. Welcome to the Thomas Trainer Show. Basically, this is chatting live streams where I like talk about, I don't know, bullet points that I want to hit. All that stuff. Uh, so yeah, how's it how's it going, guys? Is it laggy? Why are you why are you doing that? Don't do that. Don't shut up. Shut. You're gonna, like, kill someone. How's it going? I'm doing good. Um. So, yeah. How, how's it going? I, um. Dang. I need to get like, I don't know, something to like, because literally if I do this, anything moving this mic is, just gets transferred right into the microphone so you hear everything. Um, so my apologies. But, um, Recently saw the Wonka movie, and as a decent fan, 
of the original. Not so much the Johnny Depp one, but I think it was okay. I think it was okay. This one, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was... It was certainly not bad, not not as good as Gene Wilder, but but it was a it was a good it was a good movie. It felt very very storybook, like it gave like a very storybook feeling. Uh, there was like a uh, if you guys ever watched like the BFG, another Roald Dahl uh, movie adaptation. Um, of uh, his book, The Big Friendly Giant. Uh, the uh, they did pretty good with that movie, and it's probably one of my uh, another one of my favorite like modern s like ish Disney films. Um, because it it felt like a storybook. It felt like a Roald Dahl book, and. It, I kind of got those same, like, BFG vibes from this. It felt very much like the, uh... It felt very much like, like the BFG movies. Um... You yeah, know, I saw, I saw that movie. Uh... I did not see Wish. Because I swear it's made by AI. Um... Yeah, no, I, uh, I enjoy the Wonka movie. The, um, I, I, because th I don't think they were trying to make it be like, oh, check out this. This is going to be the greatest one. This is going to be better than the Gene Wilder one. No, I feel like they're kind of admitting that, hey, they, this will never be as good as the classic, but it can be, it can be a good movie. And it definitely was. It definitely was like a, good movie the plot was awesome the music was really good shockingly i did not go into it thinking that it was a musical i should have because every like every wonka movie except for the johnny depp one i'm pretty sure is the um is is a musical in in some form i think yeah yeah it's a, it's a musical I should have expected that, but I didn't. So literally when the spoils, but when the, um, when it shows like the beginning text and then it shows Wonka and I was like, oh, yay. And then immediately, like, I just start hearing like this music and I was like, it's a musical. Okay. I did not expect it to be a musical. I should have, but I didn't. And so the whole time, like, as the, like, I just hear like, um, the whistling, and I'm like, oh. But I love that little, um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember my music terms. But it was just like at the beginning when they had Pure Imagination, like playing, like a, a soft piano just playing Pure Imagination. I was like, like it just kind of brings in the, it kind of sets the emotion of the film. Um, and that's what I really like. Um. And then, like, just at first, I'm going to be very honest. At first, when I first watched the film, because I've seen it twice so far. Um, when you... When you go... When, when... When he first started singing, and when he first showed up, I was like, okay, Timothy Chalamet's probably not giving 100% right here. But then as soon as he did, um, as soon as he did his second one, which was, like, when he did, um, my gosh, when he did the, um, because the first song I was like, okay, he's probably not putting 100% into it, um, I was like, that, eh, this is gonna be okay. And then in the second one where he... Oh my gosh. I can't remember. It's the chocolate song. The one that he's like, and there's chocolate. And there's chocolate. I can't remember. I cannot remember. My mate. 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 My m
my mind's blanking right now. It's morning for me still. Um, but the, um, the, the, that song, I can't, I'm gonna, like, I need to remember what that song is. We literally have it on our Discord right now. Ike's in, <laughs> Ike's in the Discord alone. I'll join you in a second, Ike. Uh, you've never had chocolate like this. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. When that song came up, I was like, okay. Okay. He's kind of, he's kind of given it. I, I can see, I can see like that he's trying to like, he's, he's given, he's given his, his all. And then immediately by the end of the film, or no, when he does, um, when he does world of our, uh, world of your own, I was like, oh. And I love the, I love the, just that shot. And I always, I always love these shots because you can feel like the, okay, here we go moment is when it's like when he's about to sing that song and you get like the, it's just completely black, but all you can see is just the front of his face. And I, the whole time I'm like, okay, here we go. And when he sings that song, I'm like, oh, and the whole time I'm like, I'm like kind of just digging it. It was kind of good. It was kind of good. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I will say, what's his name? I can't remember who plays the Oompa Loompa. Uh, I'm looking up everything. Hugh Grant. Yay. I just remember that. Hugh Grant. Um, I thought that those were kind of funny. The, the, the moments in that one were kind of funny. Because it's like, they know that this is a little dumb and stupid. So then they kind of just make fun of it a little bit. Which is, I kind of like that whenever you make like a, a film. And you immediately know right off the bat, hey, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna, um, this isn't, this is going to be pretty weird looking, but hey, like, I, at least they're giving in to it, rather than being like, yeah, it's not weird at all, we promise it's not weird, because then it just, it kind of breaks it, um, but yeah, no, like, it was really good movie, it was probably, according to my coworker and I almost agree with him, it was probably one of the most heartwarming movies, um, in my opinion, um, it was one of the most heartwarming movies since since I watched Puss in Boots and The Last Wish. Because that was just... I was... It's it's kind of weird because... Uh, I'm going to go off to Puss in Boots real quick. Because I saw that film and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Just the storytelling. the It was really funny. Uh, but not only that, but the hidden message of just... Uh, that life is short. And also, like, through the entire moment of, because I deal with anxiety and, 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 um, uh, yeah, I do, I deal with anxiety. Um, there was, like, a lot of, like, po moments when you could, like, when, when Puss in Boots is running from death and running from, uh, it, it, like, he's running from death, you can kind of, um, I kind of, I kind of myself personally sympathetic, symp um, empathized or sympathized. I can't, remember, I can't remember. Uh, I kind of felt what he was feeling, and it was just kind of this like moment where I connected with Puss in Boots in that film, and I was just like, because like there are times where I'm just like, dude, like this is like a very scary moment, and it's just like it takes over you. And the the moment like that literally like made me um the moment that literally almost made me cry was when he's running through the forest. Um well I probably did cry and probably just being like, Yeah, I did cry. I didn't you know. No. Um was when he's running through the forest, running from death after um Jack Horner and the 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 bear the three bears and goldilocks um are do, 
doing their thing. Or it's just Jack Horner, I can't remember. But when Puss in Boots leaves, um, and starts running from death, because he hears death, and then all of a sudden when he's in the woods and you can hear his heart beating out of his chest and you can, like, there's just this moment of where he just absolutely just, and then all of a sudden, like, um, um, What's his name? Burrito. Bur Burrito? Burrito? I can't remember his name. Uh, when he's, like, gets cl uh, she, or he or she gets uh, up close to him. Yeah, she. When she gets up close to him and just kind of, um, uh, and just cuddles him. And then all of a sudden, all of his, like, and then you can just feel him going, just it just melts away all the anxiety melts away i kind of connected with the character because i have a lot of times where i'm just like <sighs> and then there's something that good that comes in the way that kind of puts me at ease it was just really heartwarming i i thought it was a really heartwarming fel uh, film it, it shared a good message um and especially with this with the wonka film it it definitely like taught like a good message of like um that like like what the the what i got out of it was that the people that are set in your path are the most important more than um you know being the best at something it's being with a community um uh, that's why I I tried not to cry, but it just overwhelmed me when um, when it's at the end of the film. Spoils again. It's the end of the film. Everything's silent. Everyone's um, just gathering, talking, chatting, and then we get this scene of just Wonka sitting on a stair uh, staircase, looking out into the crowd. And then he pulls out the the chocolate. He um, and then I can't remember what happens what happens first between these, but when he opens up the the um, the chocolate and, it's, and he sees the letter, and then he looks up and there's his mom just out there, just in the middle of the audience. I literally like I was like had a meltdown and I was like I was like oh, please don't don't cry Thomas and then immediately um, when it shows like the the note I was like ah then she disappears and then when they when they say it's time I literally went no no and then literally the moment that what's her name says we found her i was like <gasps> oh. i was so excited and, and then like i just was like she found her <laughs> i literally had like a meltdown it was it was terrible but it's such a heartwarming movie it was such a heart moving movie if you haven't seen it go ahead and see it right now after I've spoiled you on the entire film but also I myself am coming out with a, a film right now it is adrift and um, I thought I would react to the trailer give you some uh, tips and stuffs on it real quick we'll watch both of them because even though that they're very similar one uh, i'll tell you the bat like the whole thing of why there's two of them but without further ado And if you haven't seen the trailer, go down into the link in the description below and um, 
can go. Go, uh, go check, go check it out. Go check it out real quick. But, um, yeah, we kind of just, I kind of had this idea to make a Phasmophobia esque film for the past five months. Um, and yeah, I, I, it, like, it came out, like, originally, um, uh, this idea for Phasmophobia fan film came out, uh, came into fruition in my head about, I think it was September. It was either September or late August, early September, or late August was where I was just like, what if I did a Phasmophobia type film? And then I was like, Halloween's coming up. So if we could get it done by then, that would be amazing. But then I kept writing a script and going, eh, that doesn't really, it's not, it doesn't really work that good. So then I was like, okay. Uh, so I rewrote the script and everything, and I still wasn't happy with it. And then I kind of just put it off because um, just kind of just mental problems and sadness got in my head. So I just kind of put it off for a little bit. And then um, early December is when I started going, okay, let's get this done. So I started ordering props. I started ordering. Um, I had James making props. And then I had James make the theme that you hear, which if you want to go check it out, is interdimensional music. <sighs> this guy. Go check him out. I should have put him in the description, but I didn't, sadly. Um, but he makes, James makes music. Go check it out. It's mostly mice, micing and monsters and terraria stuff, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so that's when he made this. I asked him to make this first theme and he was like, it's, it's perfect. So that's what I did, uh, uh, that's what he did, I told him to make that, and then immediately I was like, this could work. And basically, I wanted a, I wanted it very centered around the Adrift theme, which, if you don't know, from Phasmophobia, is the music box. So we really wanted to center it around the music box, um, in some sort of way. So I had James start making a music box, and uh, obviously an EMF. Um, prop, which are, which I I'll I'll see if I can go get them real quick. They're very cool looking. I will say. Where did I put the EMF though? That's the problem. I have no idea. I'll have to find it at some point. Um, but I want it centered around that, and of course the ghost, and obviously. We don't, the, the ghost isn't really revealed, so that's where you guys have to solve the mystery, but it is coming out on the 25th, which is here in two weeks, if I remember correctly, two weeks, or a week and a half, uh, no, no. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Um, and I'm super excited. I'm super excited for you guys to see it. So, without further ado, let's watch Here we are. the trailer. Oh, here we are. Six Tanglewood Drive. So, the Six Tanglewood Drive, if you don't know... Also, if you don't want to get spoiled... Like, I might give little spoils on the story every now, here and then, uh, then don't watch this. Wait, and then you can watch this, but. It's a little more ominous than I was expecting. Pretty much. We had one day to shoot this, most of this. Most of the scenes with Alex, or all the scenes we that are, Alex is in, we 
filmed we had to we had to get filmed all in one night um which was like the span of three hours we got everything done um These flashlights were so annoying. I have one right here. These were so annoying. Seizure warning, by the way. But... I hate the fade. Get, get off the fade. Get off. Get off, cut. But if you... You see, like, that... If you do it... Like that, it starts to flicker. Then when you do this, it starts to flicker even more. So, these were a pain in the butt. Because these, for some weird reason, the battery life is not terrible. Because they're rechargeable. The only problem... Is that, after a while, they will slowly dim down to this setting. And then this setting they will slowly dim down for some dumb reason i don't know why but they do that and it's so dumb because they're obviously like even when they're charged all the way because this one's not but even when they're charged all the way they just don't they don't work but this is supposed to be i tried to go for the best like uh model uh not model tier tier three flashlight uh that i could like the most i don't know um, sci-fi looking one, the one that looks more professional, but, um, yeah, it, it, um, these flashlights sucked, like a lot, they sucked a lot, but yeah, no, it, it was terrible, because now you get this flicker from... This is also still James, by the way. Clark, give us a sign. I love this shot. <laughs> it's a good shot. It was probably it's probably one of my favorites because, well, mm, yeah, it's it's probably one of my favorites because literally the way we shot that scene, and I could probably go into bigger depth when it comes out and I react to the entire thing, is we. Uh, what we did is in the film we fa we put like we have a scene of James putting it down, but then when we do this, we have like the candle on like a pedestal, and then we just have it aimed up so that we get like all everything in view while getting the the candle in view, but it looks like it's still on the table. James, it's so good with this theme. Why does my thing keep flickering like that? It's so weird. Also, the end, the, the um, animation for the ghost is super janky, and also yes, that is a picture of the of one of the ghost mod like pictures. Um, I did not want it to be that revealing. I promise it is a lot better looking and and less janky in the in the in the in the. In the Goodness gracious! In the first one, uh, or in the in, in the actual film, because I did that, and then I went, oh, I could just actually do this the right way. So I did it the right way, and oh, here we are. Here we are. Six Tanglewood Drive. Six Tanglewood Drive is a uh, reference to one of the um, houses, by the way, in the game. Sold. We tried, we tried finding one of the houses in the game that actually looks the most like our house. And Six Tanglewood Drive was the closest. Expecting? Uh, they, they killed the 
Hopefully. By the way, we were still filming this while all of our Christmas decorations were up. So uh, that's why there's some in the background, as you'll see in some shots. We tried getting... We took down most of them. I love this. Because this was... This was an actual trailer theme. The original... I took the original Adrift theme that James made and just made it trailer looking, but this one's an actual trailer. Score. John Clark, give us a sign. <laughs> I love that. I also... I don't know if it... Yeah, you you guys, you see it. I, I am a character in this, but I also play the ghost, by the way. Just so you know. <laughs> if you're going to tell. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um Yeah. That's that's pretty much all I have. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. You're the best. But yeah. No. I'm I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Welcome back to the comment section. What? I'm Brett Cooper. You guys need to I'm super excited for this. Um hopefully you guys like it too. Um but yeah. Uh, also, I want to touch on some stuff. Um, I have surgery next week. I'm a little nervous for it. And that's why I haven't been online as much. Haven't been posting anything. Um, live streaming is because with the surgery coming up, I've been absolutely stressed with work. I've been absolutely stressed with relationships, absolutely stressed. And it's just that, like, I, I, I want, I want to make this clear. I'm trying my best to try and get back to the norm of being like, having like letting you guys know what's going on um because there's a lot of situations where i just go eh, and i completely forget to like let you guys know so then you guys are like where's thomas did he die he went to the hospital last time i saw him and where did he go nope i promise you everything's everything's fine i have another surgery to fix my other lung this lung is fixed. The other lung is not. Um, we're going to fix that lung next week. So I'm a little nervous. And I will probably be offline. After a drift comes out, I will probably be offline for a little bit longer. Because I'll be, one, resting. And two, um, working on... Like writing for, uh, write like write writing new uh new, um films. But more importantly, recovering from a surgery and also just getting back to normal because having this lung problem has completely changed the trajectory of the like my past year. So, I, like it's completely like. It hasn't, it, I wouldn't say it's ruined my year because I still think I had a good year, but I would say that it was not fun. It was not a fun year. 2023 was not a fun year. Um, cause I was just, I, I wasn't like, a, I was a, I was a mess. Um, uh, spiritually, mentally, um, and 
that's also why I decided to make that video that is on my on the main channel that is literally the last video that I posted. Uh, because I thought it was like a, it, it was a message that was speaking to me throughout 2023. 20, and I thought I would share it with the world because I um health problems suck. They suck a lot. And, you know, anxiety sucks. Everything sucks. But, yeah, I've been trying to work on myself spiritually. Um, because it wasn't like until recently that I noticed that I really needed really need to be closer with my relationship with God. Because uh, when you're stressed, the last thing you want to think about is the good things. And family, God, all that stuff, friends. It's It's really hard to think of those things when you're going through something like this. And so... Um, yeah, it, it was, it was just not a fun year for me, but I think it was one of the good year, good, a good year in a sense that, um, I got to be a light to people during this time. I got to, um, um, I got to just be, um, I guess, a selfless person, where I wasn't really, I wasn't focused on myself, I was more focused on um, other people. Um, but I did have, like, relationship problems earlier in the year, graduating earlier in the year, surgery later in the year. And then with the holidays and everything and seasonal depression and fun stuff, just kind of, just kind of hurt me. This whole year was a, a year of hurt, but, but it wasn't a bad year. It was probably, because I think the bad years are also the good years because those are the years that you can you know that no year could be worse than that year, or you can try to make those years no wor uh, not as worse as the previous year, or as that bad year. Um, and I've certainly grown in my knowledge when it comes to relationships. I've certainly grown in my knowledge about myself, how I work. I've grown in the knowledge of who is in charge. I've grown in the power of who... Um, I've grown in the... Um, just trying to be a better person and I'm still certainly working on it but um, but that's that's the most I can do is try and work on it and let God do the rest but yeah that that was my that was my year not the not the worst. Not a bad year, but it wasn't a good year. But hopefully this year is the year that I actually get to live a life and go out with people and be friends with people and make new friends with people. Um, and hopefully 
I can uh, leave my mark on the world. But yeah, I'm going to end the stream here. Hope you guys have a uh, wonderful night. Because uh, I have D&D &D here in a little bit. So I'm certainly going to have fun with that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.